All right, so assuming you didn't drop the class after the last video, I want to continue this thread. Perspective, view, frustum. Part three. What about Zed? Reminds me of that 90s movie, What About Bob? I don't think I've ever seen it, but they had such a big ad campaign that like, what about Bob? It sticks in my head, but I don't think I've ever, I've ever seen the movie. It's probably really bad. So the, the, what do we do about the Z? We've already figured out, and I'm going to you know highlight this above here. We figured out we have X and a Y. We divide by Z. We go to normalize device coordinates. <laughs> what else do you want? Well, let's think about the Z coordinate. You might think, yeah, Z doesn't matter because we're, we're, we're projecting on a 2D plane. Z doesn't make any more sense anymore. But we still, it, it still does matter, OK? So we have a z-coordinate um, once projected on the view plane you might be thinking this might not make sense because we're on a flat plane now it's all the same but there are a couple of things here that I want to highlight but if we know the, where it came from, if we know the z-ordering, we know which things are deeper in the scene and which aren't. So let's think about that for a second. So knowing the z-order helps us later. Um, helps us know, for example, uh, know the um, order of things in the screen. For example, if you're doing draw one thing behind or one thing in front, it's useful to know which was in front, which is behind, right? Because you might want to fix your occlusions properly. Draw order. You might want to know how far things were. So we, won't, we maybe we can use that z-coordinate to preserve um, some of that information. And if we do it well, um, maybe we can maybe we can make an inverse transform. We can project back into the 3D world. So if we actually throw the Z away, if we lose Z, we can't on project our points from screen to world. We lose it completely. But if we have that Z information, we can actually work backwards, which is really cool. I click on something on the screen. I click, I'm in screen coordinates. I know where I clicked on the screen. Where is that in the world? Okay. Ha. Huh. If I have that Z information, it can go right back to the world spot of what I'm clicking on. And that can be really, really useful. So, yeah, projecting on a 2D surface, the jet Z doesn't make sense. We should make it go, um, we should make it flatten on that surface. But, whoa, 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 we have the spot, we have the memory. Let's think about it. Let's keep it. Let's keep our Z information around because it can be useful. And this is how it works. We just want to scale it um, from negative one to one like every other normalized device coordinate. It works a little differently because it doesn't rely on X and Y. It doesn't rely on Z, of course. It's just itself. It just relies on the near plane and the far plane. So it does work out a little differently. But I'm going to start drawing out the matrix here. So right now we already have 2N over R minus L. 0, R plus L over R minus L, 0. We have 0, 2N over top minus bottom, top plus bottom over top minus bottom, 0. And then at the bottom, we have 0, 0, negative 1, 0. OK. So whoa, that was not meant to happen. OK. We have x world y world z world and then one right cool good so um maybe i'll fix that that's pretty ugly so we don't want z to rely on x at all where it is in the x doesn't impact where it is in the z so i'm gonna put it go ahead and put a zero there 
we don't want it also to rely on the Y. So where it was in the screen shouldn't impact the new Z coordinate. The Z coordinate is just where was it normalized negative one to one. So the only things left are this A matrix, uh, uh, sorry, A, not matrix, A um, scalar, A value, and this B value. So that's the only two places where I can think of um, use to fix my Z. It's A matrix and B matrix. So then my Z screen coordinate is going to be um, A, so 0x, 0y, A times ZW plus B. And then because of the homogeneous coordinates, we divide by negative ZW. Okay? So we have to work within these parameters to scale our Z. Our goal is our ZW at near plane, we want to be negative one. Uh, when ZW is at the far plane, we want it to be one, and we, lin we, we scale within here. So then what I'm gonna do now is skip all the math. Wow, look at all the math Jim just did. Okay, more derivation. <laughs> I don't see the, now that you've seen how I can build this and how it works, I don't see the point in going into more, so I'm going to leave that. After more derivation um, and, you know, solving with simultaneous equations, you can turn both of these into equations, Wait. and then solve it, you come up with the following, really nice set of matrices, uh, values. A is going to be F plus N over F minus N. Notice the similarity, right? Because the same math under the hood. And B is going to be minus 2FN um, over F minus N. That's it. So if you want to figure out how those are derived, you can look it up. If you can't find anything reasonable, give me an email. I'm happy to send you a, a, you know, a curated link, um, a, curated, a curated link to help you uh, see that and help you if you're curious about the math. But that's it. So now we're done. Now we have, this is the OpenGL perspective projection matrix. If you have a math book or you're working in a program like Maya, you'll see slight variations in here, plus or minus ones, the Z might not be negative, stuff like that. Um, it depends whether they, they put the camera on the origin or one away from the origin. Um, all these little things make tiny differences in the math, but I wouldn't worry too much about that. It's the intuition here that, that matters. All right, I just paused the video and I actually went and looked up something. Take a look at this. So I did a Google for the GL Frustum. Um, here's a command, here's a Microsoft, it doesn't really matter, here's a Microsoft um, API reference. If you call v GL Frustum, you give it left, right, bottom, top, near and far plane points. Um, and then scroll down, it does the following calculation. Okay, look at that. 2n over r minus l, 0a. a is r plus l over r minus l. Okay, if I just showed you this and said this gives you the frustum, you'd be confused, right? Oh, and there's that negative one down there. What the heck is that, Jim? Um, but we've done derived this. We see where it comes from. This is exactly what OpenGL does when you give it when you give it these commands. The other thing I'll mention, which I didn't actually mention in the notes, but it's very you know very important to read your reference and your user command. Typically, <clears throat> typically Z near and far. Here we go. It's written right here. They must be positive, and the reason for that is because they're distances. Distances are absolute values. The the distance to the near, distance to the far. It doesn't make sense to make them negative because if you make them negative. You're counteracting that negative that we already did and all the math gets funny. So when you're using the near and far clipping planes, it's the distance to the plane, not the coordinate of the plane. That's not the same as left and right. Left and right are the coordinates, which can be negative and positive. And as you can see, the reference does a good job here. The coordinate, negative 10. Bottom, negative 10, right? The distance, these are absolute values. That'll trip you up, so be very careful. Um, be very careful about that. All right, so let's stop here and we'll come back and do part four of our perspective view frustum.